All right, we are here at my outdoor worm bin, and we're gonna look at three things. First, we're gonna check on the hydrangea flower put in here about 12 days ago. And then we're gonna check on the big feeding that we gave them. It was kind of a clean out the freezer kind of feeding, and we mixed that in with the flower to hope to jumpstart them. And then finally, we're gonna add more food scraps, and I'm gonna add some regular compost from my regular compost pile, just to add some more microbial life here, and the worms absolutely love compost. Let's start digging in, and I'm already seeing, like I should showed you some petals so I'm not real optimistic about this hydrangea flower and it's breaking down and you'll probably see like a ring around here because we harvest castings every time we feed around here so let's kind of dig in now we added some water to try and help the breakdown process and I was talking to my mom who gave me that flower and she said that she didn't think that was a natural color of it and that maybe they used some dye so that could be another issue with why that flower wasn't breaking down but we did add a lot of bedding to this because i just saw so many castings the last time we fed and the worms are all in here when we were pulling out the castings i didn't see a lot of worms on the edge so i think they're in here and the temperatures have gotten just a little bit cooler. And wow, just a lot of worms right into here. So let's keep digging in. And whoa, right in. Oh, it's, it's a little slimy. Must be that feeding. But whoa, I just think I put my hands in the middle of a worm ball. Look at all of them. Oh my gosh, they are really going through that feeding that I gave them. This is fantastic. Look at them. And you can tell really well that they're red wigglers from that yellow to orange tint on the end of their tail there. But this is great. This is definitely where they were hiding out, in the middle. So let's keep digging and see if that flower... Oh, wow. <laughs> I love it. Look at that. I was a little discouraged when I came in here to harvest the castings from the side because I thought maybe they had escaped or their population decreased, but... They were 100% getting into this feeding in the middle. Starting to see the flower down here. And I think, I think we've got some action with it. Let's look and pull it out. And I would say, uh, I don't know. The outside kind of got some action, but inside there's still a little bit more so it was laying down like this oh it just worms all over my hands it was laying down like this so based on the branching right here that i see they started to take apart the flower petals that were mixed in with the food and this is kind of matted down almost like you would see when you put just paper into a worm bin it gets matted down like this and i think that might have prevented some of the liquid from getting into here to break these down but i do have confidence now that this flower will get broken down eventually so i'm going to kind of take it apart and maybe try to unmat a little bit the flower parts but that is kind of cool the the branches and the red branches here which again now i realize is dye the plant itself is probably more this color and perhaps the flowers were white or pink but then they added that dye so no worries the worms will take care of it eventually and within that feeding, this looks like some banana peels. It's that old mango seed. It is a little bit softer than before, so that's good. We'll try and remember to keep putting this in the center. This is some of that tray, that compostable tray. It's doing a, a good job of breaking down. And obviously the smaller pieces that I'd ripped up probably got broken down quicker than these bigger pieces. But that is, again, good news. So let's pull over from here. I'll go underneath some. And yeah, look at that. I keep saying look at that. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but this is so exciting to see all these worms in here doing their jobs. Just, I mean, and look at the rich castings all over. This is just going to be so great for the garden. Luckily here in Florida, I can garden year round, but our spring is still just an absolute joy to garden in. You can grow everything, whereas now we're mostly growing leafy greens and stuff. Let me come in from over here and I'll just kind of turn it over, aerate it out. Wow, you I mean, this is, <laughs> you're just getting to see so many worms. This is great. This makes me happy. I think they probably also are in the center helping with the um, heat. It's been a little bit colder. But yeah, there's another worm ball. And I know this, it may look like it's the same worm ball, but I'm pulling from down and around the sides, bringing it up. But 
Wow, look at that. All red wigglers. All right, we're gonna pull the outside in. <laughs> it's like a boulder, a boulder full of red wigglers. Actually, it's not a boulder, it's a mango seed. And they love to get the fibers within the mango seed. As you can tell, it's just like a spaghetti brain of red wigglers all throughout. This. Yeah. Oh yeah, just unbelievable castings. In a few weeks time, these are gonna be just great castings and worm ball after worm ball. Yeah, look at that one, <laughs> just everywhere. Gosh, I don't, what do you guys think? How many worms do you think are in here? My guesstimate is 4,000, but you know, this is, this is a lot of worms. It could be four to 5,000. Let me know what you think, because this is just every, every little time I move it, more and more worms. All right, we're almost through this. We're almost through the back end. And I'm gonna be able to feed, you know, as you're checking on your worm bins, it's important to see how much they've eaten and just base your next feeding on them. Rarely do I skip a feeding. I think I skipped a feeding recently in my tiny worm bin, but that was just because it was getting some pot worms in it. And I just wanted to try it out and underfeed it a little bit, but another mango seed there. All right, I think we're ready. I think we have kind of aerated this out, made sure there's no pockets of fermentation, that kind of thing. You might see an onion paper or two in here. Definitely try not to feed the bulky parts of the onions. In fact, you can skip them. I realized that in my vermi hut that they're not really gonna go for the onions too much. Yeah, and let me know in the comments if you have put onions in and what your experience was. And here's a banana, here's I think I had a chunk of banana that I squeezed open and they've gotten to some of it, but not all of it. And again, I think it was matted down with some other stuff. So we're gonna let that get separated out so that they'll have equal access to it. Let's make our feeding zone, which this is, I just dig through this and there's all kinds of worms everywhere. What is this? I'm not sure what that is. It feels mushy. Perhaps it was a potato or something. Again, nothing in here smells, so I can't really tell what things are based on smell. But let's, I just, I don't wanna put stuff with tons of worms right here. So I keep digging these worms out, but every handful has tons in there. So I'll put some bedding down first. That might help things out. And the initial bedding I'm gonna use is what was left over from us harvesting just about 20 minutes ago. So there's some of that and I'll put the rest in later. But we'll also put in some new bedding. And then here's what we had in mind. This is kind of a hodgepodge of lettuce and strawberries and potato skins. And I see kind of a big onion right here, which I'm gonna just take out. They really, that kind of onion, I really don't need to have that in my bin. So I'll just put that in my regular compost. But this is gonna work out. This will be a good little feeding for them. They still have some leftovers, so they'll get this kind of a moderate feeding. It's not anything too big, not anything too small. Put a little bit more bedding on top. And then finally, I'm going to add some regular compost from my regular compost bin. And this is just to add a little bit more microbial life, some extra for them, some different microbial life that will be in here. And the worms absolutely love, you know, finished or almost finished compost from your compost bin. I'll finish it off with our regular coffee, just add a little bit there. And then of course our grit, which is just pulverized eggshells. The coffee adds another food source, some more nitrogen for them. And the eggshells help to buffer any kind of acidic conditions, but they also use it for grit because they have gizzards. So let's go ahead and start burying it. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos and get notified, ring the bell. I'll let you know when I release a new video. And I've got a tiny worm bin that I keep indoors and also a vermihut worm tower that also I do different experiments and get lots of worm castings from. So I hope everybody is doing good and I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.